Herbert the Fearsome Dragon. Oh, brother. Herbert the Timid Dragon. Now that's more like it. Adapted from the Golden Book of the same name by Mercer Mayer. My pal, Herbert the Dragon, lives in a snug cave on the edge of the forest wild, but uh, not too wild. Herbert's the nervous type. Every night at bedtime, he lights a candle and reads us a story from his favorite book, Knights in Armor. I love these exciting tales of brave knights and princesses in distress. Gee, diddly, I wish I were a brave knight in armor just once in my life. <laughs> you see, Herbert's not brave. No, 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 no. He's timid. Yet, that dreadful hulking shape creeping closer and closer, reaching for me to do something, Diddly. Her baby, every time you eat a slice of dragonberry pie, your imagination runs away with you. Listen, pal, you gotta get a grip on yourself. Uh, a grip, a grip. That sounds dangerous. No, it's not half as dangerous as spending your life afraid of everything, even your own shadow. But, but, but that shadow's scary. No, not to a knight it isn't. You want to be a knight, don't you? More than anything. Oh, yes. That is my dream. Well, then, let's clean up and go find it, pal. Out, uh, out there, in the cold, cruel world. No, no, I, I can't. Oh, sure you can. Now stay here with that dreadful shadow hanging around. Hey, 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 where you going? To pack. So that's why Herbert decided to leave home and seek adventure along the dusty road. Well, this, uh, this isn't so bad so far. What, what's that? Just the wind, Herb. <laughs> I knew that. <gasps> What's that? Help! Help! Monster! Beast! Snake in the grass! <laughs> Close. It's a bunny rabbit. A rabbit! <laughs> I knew that. No, gotta be careful. Can't trust those rabbits. <gasps> What's that? What's that noise? Someone or something's following us. That dreadful scraping. I can't stand it. I... Ah, well, <laughs> that's better. Come, Diddly, knighthood awaits. Your tails await, you mean. What's that? What do? The princess has lost a wheel. He gets. Oh, it's just a princess in trouble. Ah, a, a princess, princess in, in trouble. trouble? Ah, sweet destiny. <laughs> the princess was in trouble. A wheel had fallen off her cart. But when Herbert saw her guards, he thought that they were kidnappers. Oh, my. She's beautiful, even for a princess. Oh, look, pal. It's a perfect opportunity to help her. You could be a hero. Ahem. <coughs> May I help? Egads! A dragon! Run it for your lives! I don't think they understand dragon talk. Alteth! In the name of the kingeth! Take that, you vomit! What's a vomit? I don't know. Don't worry, princess! I'll save you! Let me down! The archers were the king's guards, but how should Herbert know that? Let go of me, you beast! Hang on tight! We're almost no. there! Arrows can't hurt a dragon, but Herbert was scared. So, uh, he ran until he reached his cave, set the princess down, and... Listen, you silly-looking dragon. When my father, the king, finds out you've carried me away, he's going to fix you. Oh, my. Uh, what have I done? Uh, maybe <laughs> you'd better go. This way out, sister? No waiting. No! My mother told me never to go out alone after dark. I'm staying right here until my father comes to rescue me. You just wait. You're gonna get it. Per perhaps some uh, music will cheer you up. I hate dragon music! Don't take it to heart, Herbie Baby. Everyone's a critic. Ah, you, you must be... 
hungry, my dear sweet princess. Icky, sticky dragon soup. Ugh. I rather like it myself. Psst. Er, maybe if we tidy up the guest room, yes, she'll uh, settle down. Ah, dusty, musty dragon bed. Yuck. Particular, isn't she? No. Yeah, particularly dangerous. That was only the beginning. Ah. The princess threw a temper tantrum. Hey, she even pulled my tail. No, no, no! She smashed all of Herbert's fine dragon bone china, tipped over his bookcase, stomped on his toys. Uh, I'm getting no sleep at all. Well, at least things can't get worse. Open up in there! Let me in! Or can I? Come out and fight, you dragon, you! Me? Him? This is uh, terrible. Uh, uh, whenever I get frightened, uh, 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 I get hiccups and uh, <clears throat> start smoking everything. Uh, uh. Hey, wait! Come back! What about the princess? Yeah, take our princess, please. Well, you did it. All that smoke scared him away. Hey, buddy, you gotta control yourself. Well, that afternoon, the king and his whole army marched into Herbert's front yard. I'm going to make mincemeat out of you, oh foul and villainous dragon. Who? Where's the dragon? I think he means you, old buddy. Me? <coughs> There's the cannon. I'm the battering ram. Daddy! Oh, no. Uh, here it goes again. <coughs> Whenever I'm terrified, you know I can't stop co <coughs> coughing. And then <coughs> I can't keep fire <coughs> from pouring out of my nose and my mouth. He can't stop it, Herbert. We wanted to take the princess, remember? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> me. Blast it. The cannon's melted. The battering ram's burning. Are you men or mice? Squeak, 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 squeak. Now look what you've done, you terrible dragon. You've scared away my father's army. But, but I, I didn't mean to. I'm going home, and don't you try to stop me. Ho-ho! Oh, good riddance to bad rubbish. Oh, my. I <clears throat> certainly made a mess of things. I, I guess I'm just not cut out to be a brave knight in armor. For days, Herbert slunk around his cave. Then, a troll friend of ours dropped by for a visit. Herbert, have you heard the news? No, my radio's still broken. It's just awful. After you melted the king's cannon, burned up his battering ram and scattered his army, the Duke of Dingbat and his men kidnapped the princess they did. Uh, real kidnappers? And carried her away to Castle Grouch. The princess? No. The king has no army left to rescue her. Not even one brave knight. I wish I could help. It's my fault she's in danger. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a knight. I'm just a timid old dragon. Well, you've got that wagon load of treasure lying around in your cellar. Why don't you ransom her? It's the least I can do. Whoa, Herb, I don't know about this. No, oh, don't worry, little buddy. I know what I'm doing, I hope. There's the castle. He he hello! Anyone there? Um, I'll trade you this wagon load of gold for the princess. But the Duke of Dingbat didn't understand dragon language. What he heard was a terrible dragon roar. A dragon has attacked. Dump a ton of boulders on him. That'll fix his wagon. <laughs> Gee, my wagon is just fine. Herbert's scales were so thick that he wasn't hurt a bit. No, but he was horrified. That made his nose tickle. And of course, when his nose tickled, he sneezed. Oh, no. Uh, um, here, here it goes. Uh, 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 oh, oh, no. Um, uh, 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 it was nothing, nothing at all. Zounds! 
We're done in! Never have I seen so brave a dragon! Or one so windy! Run! Head for the hills! Oh, pooh, fellas! I lost the back door key! You are so brave! You trapped the Duke! So, Herbert took the princess back to her father's castle. And he made the Duke and his bandits pull the wagon load of gold all the way. Well, you probably guessed by now that Herbert was very popular. I dub thee first knight and grand dragon of the realm. Gee, <laughs> thanks. This, this is a dream come true. And now, let the music begin. <laughs> what a party. The king had presents for everyone. See, it says so right here. That is, presents for everyone but the Duke of Dingbad. He had to work on the safety patrol. Poo, poo, double, poo, poo, poo. So, Herbert is a knight in armor, but uh, not a brave knight in armor. <laughs> no, he's still the same old timid Herbert. But you see, nobody knows that except me and uh, the princess. Shh! And she makes sure that no one scares, frightens, or horrifies Herbert ever again. Because, well, maybe Herbert is just a timid dragon. <coughs> but you see, that's just the way we like him. I 
was too little. Here, Mom. I picked this apple just for you. But on my way into the house, I got hungry. <laughs> I want to set the table just for you. Set the table just for you. But the TV was too loud. <laughs> dum -da dum 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 just for you. Dee -dee -dee -dee. Great, Mom. I want to take a bath just for you. Whoa! There's rough sailing ahead, Beanie. Here comes the storm. Watch out! The tidal wave! Stop I tried not to splash, just for you. But there was a storm. <laughs> okay, Mom, right away. I'm really gonna do it this time. Something very special, just for you. Here I come. Love you, Mom. I did it. skin hat and the annual Edge of Nowhere 40 Mile Fun Run. Sponsored by Island Joe! <clears throat> yes, well, it was the morning of the fun run. Hurry, Reginald! You'll miss all the fun! <clears throat> That's Reggie, if you please. Now, <clears throat> where was I? Oh, yes, I was preparing to attend the race when quite suddenly a strong gust of wind puffed up and... Lost your hat, Harry. Stop that hat at once. <laughs> oh, my. No, no, Muffy Kings. Let the nice man catch his hat. Why, looky there, folks. A runaway hat. Stop in the name of the law. Yep, and it's headed toward the airport, Sheriff. Well, I'll be. Look at there, Homer. An airborne hat. Quick, I need a plane. My squeezel skin hat has flown off, and I must catch it. Sorry, fella. All we rent is flying machines. And remember, a safe landing is one you can walk away from. <laughs> you betcha. I'll take anything that flies. Wait, not that one. That's Island Joe's 1911 fizz bag. Some folks just won't listen, Norman. <laughs> We can make it pop. <laughs> the fizz bat crashed. 
smashed in pieces. Poor Reggie was so sad. Golly, what a mess. He failed to catch his squeezel. Indeed, it was too bad. Oh, sounds just like Squeezel skin. The Squeezel kept on flying in the edge of nowhere run. It crossed the halfway mark and thought that it had won. Then carried by the wind and a flying loop-de-loops, it flew through a window and fell into the goo. Not goop, that soup. Tango soup, Ooh, my favorite fruit soup. Tango and hat soup. Yuck! There goes my lunch. Where did this come from? Hmm, perhaps there's a stamp. An airmail stamp. Ooh, I love stamps. <laughs> hmm, only a name and address. Reggie McLeod. I can mail it with my stamps. <laughs> so the stamp collecting trollis took his stamps and Reggie's hat. He walked into the post office and... Oh, my land, a rat! The place is swarming with varmints, Esther. Can I keep him, Mama? Oh! When he tried to mail the squeezel skin to Dinosaur Drive... What's the zip code for new bones? The postal clerk just slammed his cage and said... Eek, we close at five. Oh, great learn. Try a bus, buddy. So the troller stood in line to catch the edge of nowhere bus. But when the people saw him, oh my, they made a fuss. Not my taxi. He couldn't get a ride to save his life or Reggie's hat. The taxi turned, the bus backed up. Officer, did you see that? Patrol 45 here, we've got a 901 on 4th Street. Over. Watch your mama, that dog needs a ride. It's amazing what you see in the streets these days. Oh, yellow yeah, pop. Hey, fella, try the train! Then the trolley bought a ticket for the train. It was express. But the train had left without him. It was too full, I guess. He sadly watched it chug away and turned upon his feet. Come on, Zip. Let's get a bite to eat. Here's a nice cafe. I wonder if they take stamps. It's a 901. Yeah, you're right, Mayor. <gasps> Kerploppus. I think we better leave, Zip. <laughs> so we started off on foot. It was the only thing to do. We've got to find this Reggie, said the zip a rump -a zoo The trellis waved goodbye, then tipped his hat for all to see. And thought he heard the farmer say something about TV. Yeah, it's him, officer. Just as sure as I'm standing here, I saw that there hat on the TV. We interrupt our coverage of Island Joe's 40-mile fun run to bring you this local news flash. All the way from the edge of nowhere, here's Reginald McLeod. That's uh, Reggie. Who lost his hat. That's a squeezel skin hat. If you spot this hat, folks, please call the number on your TV screen. Now, back to our fun run runners. Howard? Thanks, Johnny. I'm here down in front of the fun house waiting for the runners to enter the park. Meanwhile, there's a crazy costumed character here causing a stir. Zounds, could plop us. Is that a trollisk down there? Hi, what is Island Joe up to now? Marge, stand aside. Let the thing have its way. Oh, Daddy, let's get some cotton candy, too. How very amusing. The runners are just entering the park. Yes, here they come, folks, down the roller coaster track. This sure is a fun run. Poor Reggie missed his hat so much that nothing made him smile. He even rode the first car of a streaker for a while. But when it failed to cheer him up, you could hear him softly moan. <sighs> Headed for the art museum. I'll visit the Sorbonne. Shh! Can't you keep it down to a shout? Did Island Joe paint this picture, Mama? No, dear. That's a pistachio. I just love museums. What is it, Herman? I suppose it's a sculpture, Ethel. You know, modern art. Oh, he's cute, Mama. Don't touch, dear. Let's look for the moaning Lisa. She looks like I feel. 
It's so stuffy in here. What I'd give for a little fresh air. Good idea. So Reggie dressed for hiking and set out to find fresh air. He passed the 40 milers and he even saw a bear. He was almost feeling cheerful when he heard the possum say, Hey, Reginald, where's that squeezel skin of yours today? So he took up mountain climbing and collected fallen rocks. But when he reached the mountaintop, he heard the vulture squawk. Ah, oh, shouldn't climb rocks without a hat, mister. He tried the silent movies, but from where poor Reggie sat, he heard someone behind him say, Sir, will you please remove your hat? I can't see. I'll call the manager, ma'am. Nothing seemed to help poor Reg forget about his cap. He even dreamed about it when he tried to take a nap. So when he left the movie, there was one thing left to do. He bought himself a brand new hat, new suit, new trousers too. It's a pinball face hat. Uh-oh, watch out, sir. Here comes old oh, dear. Watch out for that varmint. <laughs> oh, my stamps. You made me lose my stamps. Why don't you watch where you're going? <clears throat> What's this? Well, I'll be a squeezel skin. It's my old hat. How do? I've been looking for you. So Reggie and the Trollisk finally met on that fine day. Reggie got his squeezel back and shouted out, OK. He then picked up the pindo fez and gave it to his friend. I love this hat. Together they walked down the street, but this is not the end. Join me for dinner? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> they soon became fast friends. They hung their hats up side by side. The Zipperumpa Zoo had fun. It's my favorite place to hide. Reggie helped the trollis pay stamps into his book. The trollis helped Reg gather bones. This one's nice. Come on. But the best part of it all was when the same day the next year, the Edge of Nowhere run was cranking up into high gear. The crowd went wild. They cheered them on. Surprise shown on each face. When at the finish line, you guessed it, two friends won the race. Two friends won the race. So that, my friends, is the story of how the trollis got his hat. I do love this hat. <laughs>